Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Everyman Show. I am John Everyman. I think I am. Right? Am I? I don't know. I, I fucking oh, hope so. Yeah. I hope so too. <laughs> I, I, every time I, I get on the show, I ask. I, I don't know who I am. So I just, I, I turn into like 10 people. This, this podcast is chronicling John's mental breakdown. Right. That's what it the is. Finale, like, the series finale is going to be. This is for my therapist. Yeah. The series finale is going to reveal that this actually isn't real and he's just in a straitjacket right now. Exactly. That's what I thought this was this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, we're here in New York City. We are here hanging out still. I've got my friend Jack. You guys thought Jack was sleeping. Like I it's never not left. true. You never I left. Never left. You never left, my friend. So never, never listen to us when we say goodbye to someone at the end of the season and we make it all heartfelt. It's just really us pulling a ruse on all of you guys. So just you know, it's a lot. We 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 lie here. No one leaves the show. No one ever leaves the show. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here hanging out with me again, man. It's good to see you, dude. Yeah, I love that. I love the whole. You know, you do have something. I've been, since since we've been hanging out here, I've been trying uh-huh. to like pick up on what it is. I'm not really sure just yet. I think you got some sort of New York swag. Like your hair might have gotten a little more like a longer. I mean, longer, it got longer. longer. That's just kind of how hair works. Is um, that is that is that from New York? No, I mean, I just, I, I haven't cut my hair since uh, that first show I did at Churchill's, like, way back when. You remember? It was like, your best show ever. You didn't want yeah, to. Yeah, that, that, that was my very first book show, um, and uh, I literally have not cut my hair since right before that show. And I really? Just, yeah, like, I, I keep talking about trimming it, but I just never get around to it. I, like, because I think I would get it cut, but I would still keep it long. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, I don't know, I've just been growing it out. That's weird. I don't grow hair. Would you ever get a painting? I would. I would definitely. I would try it. I don't is know he, is he it. more of a cornrow guy, or is it? I would never just let him loose like all everyone else. Like little box braids. I think he'd go with some box braids. You think he'd go with some box braids? All right. Yeah. You got something going there. Hey, you're in New York. You got to do these things. Remember yeah. when we told you coming up here? These are some of the things we wanted you to adapt to, <laughs> so that way you don't get picked on. And you think that you're a part of the whole thing. Yeah. Every time people who uh, knew me before I moved here see me, they're like, oh, you're so New York now. And I don't really feel like I'm that different. It's so, there's something there. Like, I've never seen him sit so confidently. <laughs> like, he's sitting back here, like, entertaining me now. What are you talking, talking about? about? Yeah. <laughs> so, if you guys hear the sounds of the sirens in the background, it's definitely it's because we're in Times Square, New York City. Okay? I guess that's how they roll out here. I don't know, people. Um, but shout out to the stew, our friends out here in Times Square, allowing us to come do these episodes out here in our in our new land, New York City. I love it. Season five is all about these surprises, people. I cannot lie. Um, but Jack, again, thanks for being here and part of, of this whole process. Thank you for having me. I am super excited, guys. We have a guest, like we always do. We have a guest hanging out with us today. Um, it's exciting too because you know I don't know these people coming on here. I really don't. I have no clue who you are. You could be a professional killer, and we're just inviting you in here, and you could be murdering us in the next five minutes. I've been telling you. I've been telling you to book more assassins on the podcast. You have, right? I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I don't remember you right more assassins. So let's cross fingers. That's what we did today. <laughs> but it, but yeah, guys, we're bringing in these these fantastic artists. Uh, again, I don't know some of those, but we're having a chance to get to meet them and explore what New York City's got out here, people. Because you know we see so much down in South Florida and Florida in general. You know we've had a chance to meet so many artists up here. We're going to expand the universe of artistry and meet some more. So with that said, we have sitting here with us today. Artist extraordinaire, and that's how I'm going to label it right now until you explain what we're doing here with you. <laughs> we have, and, and, and you can correct me, okay? And, and, and you correct me like a true New Yorker would correct know. anybody, right? <laughs> we are sitting here with Lady G. Let's go! You yeah. got that shit right! Ooh, I was so nervous right now. I was no, and I'm relieved because I immediately forgot. Like, as soon as we shook hands, I'm a little high, and I just immediately forgot your name. I honestly didn't have to say anything. 
I did. You're, see, that's why the pressure's off you. I, I yeah. hooked this up here. Baby G. Because when I first went outside and I messed up your name, bringing me in, you gave me such an evil look. I was like, this girl looks like she's ready to fuck me up. Like, I need to fix that. Like, Lady G. I said it ten times in my head from there to the door. I promise you. Okay. Um, but thank you for joining us. I'm so excited for you to be here. Um, so, Lady G. Uh, should, should I say Lady G the entire time, or you want me to just say Lady or G? How do you feel comfortable as talking? So guys, I spell my name L A Y D G L A Y space D G. Just mm -hmm. for disclosure. Okay, okay. People call me Lay. People call me G. It's up to you. Okay, I, I like G. I like G. R. G. G. Yeah, that's that's say you know he ain't never met a girl like me. I'm a lady, but I still keep it G. What? I got a freestyle already. I just needed a beat to that. Yeah, I'm G. <laughs> I love asking this question to all my guests when we sit here. It's usually my lead-off question. And it's such a fun question to ask here right now. But where are you originally from? I'm not from Harlem. Harlem? You know okay. That's what's up. Wow. That's what I wanted to hear. I wanted to meet a New Yorker. Harlem. Oh, okay. That's what's up. That's not the best side. But now, there's, but now Harlem, it, I always hear Spanish Harlem and then Harlem. Yeah. Is, it, is there a difference, or is yeah. it all just the same area? Yeah, so, um, personally, me personally, Harlem started at 110th at Central Park, and then it goes up to about, like, 155th. Um, Central, Central Harlem is, like, 125th, dead in the middle. Then you got Spanish Harlem, I think it even goes to, like, 116th, and then the east side. If you go to 116th on the west side, you're going to see a lot of, like, Africans. You feel me? It's going to look like a mother. Sure. But if you walk down a couple blocks, it's going to look like... You know, you in DR or Puerto Rico or something. That's okay. In the chart of this okay. You'd be like, there. you'd be like, hey, what's up, my brother? And then someone goes, hey, 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 okay, okay. I, I, I think I've never been to Harlem. I've been to the Bronx okay. and obviously out here in Manhattan. But um, it was fascinating, you know, you saying Harlem because Harlem is so iconic. You know, everyone just knows Harlem. You know, especially yeah. throughout the eighties and nineties, Harlem is. a very, very popular when you think of areas in New York City. Mm -hmm. You know, there's Harlem, we got Hell's Kitchen out here, there's Property Free Best, obviously Times Square. Yeah. Uh, but Harlem's up there yeah. out of all the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Harlem, to be correct, is in Manhattan, right? Is that the borough of Sitzen? Yeah, upper, upper Manhattan. It's like 100 blocks from where we at right now. Okay. That's my neighborhood. Okay. Now, you know, Harlem, to me, in my opinion, growing up in, you know, from the 80s and 90s, Harlem was always painted in such a dire picture, you know, you didn't want to be caught in Harlem late at night, you know, yeah. the shit go down, you know? Um, so, but to you, yeah. and, and I know you're fairly younger here, um, what's, what was it like growing up in Harlem? Like, what's, what's the vibe? Well, personally, the biggest thing for me, I say all my friends sitting across here, honestly, like, Harlem is just like, up until like gentrification, it really was not diverse at all. Like I didn't have, I went to school in 152. So like if you know 25th, then you know 25th. Sure. If you know, then you know. So it's like I didn't have to leave Harlem for no reason whatsoever. And it's just like literally 40 blocks. So I'm just within my community, no diversity. I literally did not have like any way friends until I went to college. That was like the biggest thing for me for like being from Harlem, which is like so non-diverse. So it was like, when I went to college, I was like, yeah, let's, let's branch out, let's explore. Let's so it was a very strong, people. they were now these whites. Let's get to know these people. <laughs> like, who are they? <laughs> They'd be like, I've only seen these pasty looking people on TV. Oh man, stop. Man, I've heard about you guys, you're real. <laughs> <laughs> um, but not yeah, so for me it was like, as far as like social construct and stuff like that, like, I never had anything limited to me. I never feel like I couldn't do anything due to like how the world looks at me because I only ever see my people. So yeah. it was like for me, this is my oyster, and I'm gonna do what I do here. I'm gonna take it over there, go somewhere else, and do the same shit with the same exact mindset. That's it. And so I'm, I'm assuming you know, just hearing you talking, you know, you, you enjoyed living in Harlem. I'm I'm, so. I love it. I love it. You still live there now? Um. You know, I, I'm, I'm more so nomadic these days, but that thing got got to okay. hard on. Okay, I'm, I'm fascinated with it, man. I love that. Um, the the area itself, now you described a little bit to it. But what are some of the cool things to do in Harlem? 
like you know I, I've only know the cultural the cultural stories of it like what you explained but like name me some of the cool shit I'm a tourist here I, what if I want to go see Harlem today what would you tell me to go do that's about the Apollo the Apollo? Apollo? Yeah, they the go. The Apollo's in Harlem? I thought it was out here. Uh, the Apollo smack dab on 123rd Street between 7th and 8th, a.k.a. Frederick Douglass Boulevard and Adam Clayton Powell. Okay. So go check that out. Um, the Apollo, of course, you gotta see that. You know, you gotta see the Apollo. Um, it's a Magic Johnson theater up the block, but honestly, for me, I ain't saying it's nothing good in Harlem, but I'm just saying, like, if you really want to see shit and not when you gotta reach out, like, it's not much. Harlem's more of a of a living community. It's not much of a tourism town. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, tourists, yeah. we got Apollo. I'm sorry, but my brain is dead right now. I can't. 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 It's fine. It's totally fine. You know, there's people. There's people that love your city. Like, if you ask me right now, hey John, you know, what what would you go recommend to eat down in Miami? And what's the best restaurant? Miami. Ah. Which one? Flanagan's. Flanagan's, that's what you blurt? Mm -hmm. I probably would have blurted Pollo Tropical because I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Where's the great fancy place to eat? Pollo Tropical. Pollo Tropical. Go Five get. star restaurant. <laughs> Go to the Chicho Mix. Five star drive through fast food restaurant, Pollo Tropical. They don't have Pollo Tropicals up here, no? No, we don't got walk I think it might just be like a South Florida thing. Yeah. You don't have Sonics neither? You got nothing up here. Man, have you ever been to a Puerto Tropica? No? I love how you say it. The Tropicano. Yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm, someone on this video right now is looking at, why is he saying it like an American? Yeah. Puerto Tropical. Polo Tropical. No, it's Puerto Tropical. You got to roll the R in it. Yeah, Tropical. Tropical. They're good. But tell us, what is it that you do? Like, what, what is it, what, what, what artist are you? A comedian? Or music like what is it that you focus on so um i am an assassin <laughs> she is an assassin i did it i did it we're dying later but wrap it up guys no more podcasts <laughs> you know it's the uh murder in these beats oh okay you're an assassin on the beats okay that makes sense all right so so you're an artist then you do you do yeah, music I make, I make music but i also produce as well i also engineer i work at a studio up in the bronx okay so that was a little so all the stuff you were telling me earlier you're involved with all that so i thought it was just people you knew but that's also your involvement so yeah, yeah. I, I, I engineer there you know book up two hour minimum 50 an hour we in the bronx so we got podcast there we got producing dj and equipment we got a camera Backdrop, all of that sessions come with a photo shoot as well. So, get with me, y'all. Bird, 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 bird. Pop out to the Bronx. I'm gonna yeah, channel all my New York shit right yeah. now. When I walk out of here, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But that's dope. So, you do a little bit of writing, but which is the, the true focus? The music? Is it true focus? This music, I also sew as well. I make my own clothes. I don't have any pieces on today, so I wasn't gonna mention it. Mm -hmm. But um, everything I do is just developed around me becoming a better artist. Okay. And develop. Shall I get the camera shot eventually? You can look at me. It's fine. The camera's just there for us to to, to say, hey, we're doing a show. <laughs> you can look back and say hi to the crowd whenever you want, though. Okay. Yeah, don't feel sad. Okay. But um, but sh but okay. So you, you do a little bit of everything. You saying the music is the folks. What type of music is it? Is it hip hop? Because oh, I, I don't know. You know, every time I do this, especially yeah. in other parts, and I've spoken to artists and you're in that situation, and you tell them, "Oh, you're a rapper." It's like, no, no, I ain't I a rapper, G. Right, I'm a rapper, G. You're not a rapper. I ain't a rapper, G. All right, I'm so not a rapper. What, what, what type of style of music do you focus on? So originally, I started with anything that would give that mainstream hip hop vibe. You know, along the lines of Stunna, J.I., Boogie, just everything that's like that melodic, the melodic shit. Yeah. That's what I was, New York melodic. Okay. But yeah, I'm a very versatile artist. I know that's not my lane. That's just something I was doing to establish myself as a well artist. Mm -hmm. But um, like recently, I've been dwelling way more into pop. I think pop is my favorite. Out of everything I explored, pop is my favorite. But I, mm -hmm. I did with and dabble on rock and roll, uh, rap, of course, um, country. I got country music. I got all types of alternative. Interesting. All types of music. So, yeah. Um, that's fascinating, man. It, I think that's the wave everybody's going with. You know, the whole uh, we all we, we everyone well, does. The thing, with, the, the thing with pop is you can you can use other elements from 
you know, rock, from country, from, you know, those genres and put them into, like, a more pop sort of thing. That's, that's like, some of my favorite pop songs. I love pop. It's so yeah. fun, too. Like, Nick, 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 there's so much of your favorite pop artists. Yeah. Uh, pop artists? Yeah. Um, can I, can I give you a band? I like Imagine Dragons. Really? Yeah, we got to okay. do a song, gang! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they watch this. You know, know what's funny? Watch watch it. It. <laughs> you know what's funny? I see, I like, when I think of pop artists, though, like, Imagine Dragons, I, I think that does fit that role. Um, but I'm thinking more like Justin Bieber, Britney Spears. Those are your favorite pop never, artists? Never, no, 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 I'm, I'm saying that's what, that's what I'm thinking. My favorite pop artist and current favorite pop artist would be more like uh, Post Malone. Okay, that's fair. You know, like, I, I'm not, I don't follow all this shit, I but like, I, I, I'm starting to kind of grow on to a little bit of Post Malone shit. You know, like, this pop ain't really... You know, me and my like, friend was talking about Post Malone the other day. It's funny you bring him up. He was asking me the same question you asked. Like, eventually somebody's going to ask you, what's your lean at? And then he just brought up, like, Post Malone rap, but he's mostly known for, like, most of his iconic shit is pop shit. Yeah. So they consider Post Malone to be like a More pop, pop artist. artist. Yeah, no, uh, I was having a conversation at work the other day, and they were, they were like debating like who is the better rapper between Jack Harlow and Post Malone. And I was just like, Jack Harlow by default because yeah. he's like a rapper. You know, I wouldn't really call Post Malone that. You know? He doesn't even call himself a rapper, <laughs> he calls himself um, a country artist. Post Malone? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Put out a fire country album, I think. Oh, I'm yeah, so that, but that's it's really weird. That one, like Hootie and the Blowfish song he covered for that Pokemon album, oh, was actually yes. really fucking good. Yeah, but I hate how you're going the line about the Dolphins to talk about Dallas. Fuck Dallas. Ain't no Dallas fan here. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll leave sports for another time. Welcome back to the Everman Podcast. Back to the Everman Show. So, music, you say. The number one sports podcast in the nation. Okay. <laughs> What's the origin story to Lady G? Oh my god, I'm telling the origin story. So yes, you are. This is like Marvel in here. Guys, I've always been a writer. I've always been a writer. Okay. So I had this creative writing course in high, in high school. It was actually like a college level course, but it was in high school. So I wrote a poem. It was called Evil Eye. And it was like, Evil Eye, watch me cry, watch me die, shit like that. Um. Trigger warning, it was actually about like a girl getting raped. Oh it was God. deep. It was 10th grade, by the way. This was Ooh. like um, 2017 for me. Okay. Yeah, so I went home and I wanted to share the poem with my little brother. So I'm like, evil eye, watch me cry, watch me die. And my little brother, um, he's like 13, so he's 12 now. He was like, evil eye, watch me cry, watch me die. And I was like, hold on, bro, come out again. So he did it again, and I just made that old poem. I turned that bitch into a motherfucking song. Wow. Yeah, at the time, like, at my school, we had an after school program where it's like all the, uh, we had a mic as well as like an engineer there. So we had somebody to show us like how to record and shit like that. Yeah, I was like charter school. So we had like a little like extracurricular hiring children as well. But you, but you were exploring that, you said. You were going there to your after school and you worked um, on that? To be there? fair, I haven't, like, I've told the origin story plenty of times. I never told this part. But to be fair, it was a boy there. He wasn't a grade younger than me. He was always in the music shit. So it was like, we only really chilled out at after school. But, so that's originally why I started even walking into the music class. But that's, like, what put me on about it. And then I had the point where I have my own song now, so. I felt let me just do my own thing. It became the time like he's not really there, but I'm still there doing my thing and shit. And, and at first, when I first jumped in, like I ain't taking seriously a rip. I just dibbled and dabbled, probably recorded a song or two, left, came back like another next year, maybe already I'm taking it a little more serious. I'm jacking it, I'm doing shows for the school now, stuff like that. Graduated, went to college. Yo, y'all ever heard of Williamsport, Pennsylvania? Mm-hmm. No. Exactly. <laughs> Literally in the fucking middle of nowhere. <laughs> so it's like coming from the city to the middle of nowhere. It's like, like I said, I didn't even have white friends till I went to college. So like, right, that's when you really college. saw the extreme opposite of the like, Yeah, <laughs> Williams, uh, Pennsylvania is actually where they make white people. <laughs> that's, the that's where they come from. Yeah. <laughs> You want to farm to table white people? You come out of a little bit of a beard and go, whoop, and 
bootstraps a black white person walks yeah. right out. <laughs> <laughs> So, so in Williamsburg is where it really took off. Williamsburg. 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 Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Williamsburg is a very And I'm the one with headphones on, and still I'm only here to lesson here. So, yeah, so um, it's not that it took off, but it wasn't doing anything at all. So it's like, it was good. Like, I got clarity peace. I wanted to clear my mind, connected to self, you know, right. all that, because I was away from the city, but at the same time, like, you know, I'm away from the city. Ain't no studios out here. Shit, I have to do. Right. So that's when I. That's when you came back over here with that yeah. mindset. Mm-hmm. What type of artist, I guess, inspired you to work on your style of music? You know, like, where did you draw inspiration? Not gonna lie. I just, I just want to just like, <laughs> just like, just like, you know? <laughs> she, wants, she wants to prepare me and she wants to prepare me. <laughs> um, personally, me, I'm very much inspired by Juice World. I thought Juice World was one of my top. Yeah. Juice World, nah, 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 but, uh, What's your opinion with other artists similar to your your situation out here in New York? Are you guys, do you guys have that camaraderie aspect out here? Are you guys more working together? Is everyone out here for themselves? Because I'll tell you, in Miami, that's just how it goes. Everyone's out for themselves, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I'm hoping that I hear more positivity out here. Yeah. Being that you guys are a little more, I feel, more advanced and more more time spent in developing artists of all platforms versus us down there, you know? It's well, I would say it could vary on like location, setting, environment. Yeah. For the most part, like, you want to support your homies. Sometimes subconsciously, we don't even know we hate it, but we still do be hate it. So, um, but me personally, like, I don't ever hate on other upcoming artists. I always share their shit. Like, I always want to support them. I show them love. When you go to like these underground events with other creatives, like you mentioned, like most of the time you're only performing for other comedians. Yeah. Same thing as the artist. You go to an open mic, it's just a bunch of other artists there. So it's like it's just these events is really just artists meeting other artists and yeah. growing and networking in that sense. And in those environments, like yeah, it'd be all support. And it depends on like how heavy somebody fuck with you, how heavy they tap you, and how you tap them. Like, yeah, no, because a lot of the friends I've made are people that I just talk to in an open mic for longer exactly. than five minutes. Yeah, you know? and those and be the people that's like... Literally, we're, like, we're talking about underground stuff. I, I uh, just a couple nights ago, I went with a, a comedian I met a week ago, uh, invited me to this, it was like a concert in like this loft apartment in just this random building in Brooklyn. And it's the fucking coolest thing. And, so like, it, was, it was so dope. Yeah, and so I like it. The, the fact that there's so much stuff out here like that is so, like, I, I like that so much about New York. Yeah. So the, 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 the venues are even different from what it sounds like. You got uh, to yeah. fucking make I did, yeah, open yeah, my, I did an open mic in the park yesterday. Just just out in, in, in like, some no, hole in the park. Go around, go to the Red Steps on Times Square, down a block, and niggas be open mic and rapping, freestyling, sacring right here. They make that. So what you're saying is the podcast just needs to, we'll stop halfway and just finish it outside. <laughs> I feel like if it's not too heavy and we got outlets to everything, I don't see why not. Every man on the street, for real. Every man on the street. Um, I was just, you know, I guess what I was trying to pull perspective on with all this conversation is that, you know, one thing that I was hopeful with, and I'm sure it's still got to be the case, that the local community that aren't artists, people in general, mm-hmm. they don't flock to these shows more out here. Mm-hmm. You know what? That's a good question, and I'm gonna have to work on um, getting getting my own fan base and getting people. That's what I want too. Like, because I've heard that with New York. You know, New York is, has you know the people, the everyday citizens, okay, and not artists. 
are so fucking supportive and loyal. If they fuck with you, you don't have to be famous. Yeah. yeah. They will show up for your shit. Yeah. You know? Right. So yeah. that's what I was kind of but then again, it's like, alluding to, I guess. When New York is like, we got this thing, like, uh, when niggas call you a dick sucker, niggas look at you like a dick sucker, all you want is dick, like, support yeah. is dick sucker. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fucking weird. So it's like, I, yeah, you want his dick, but nigga not even famous yet. Like, if somebody was to play my shit all day, every day, yeah. I, and really, like, support me like that, like, because I'm not, like, famous, and I'm, like, not making a million dollars a night, shit like that, not a, it's, it's a possibility to make like, why do you want him to do? Ah. Uh, you get it? Whereas, it's like, if that was the next thing, that's what I'm making me Yeah, yeah. 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 yes, so it's like, look, I mean, man. I know it's always harder wherever you go in the world when you're not as known as a mainstream artist, if you will, or pop artist, whatever. Um, and I know that it is a struggle, whatever, you know, to, when you're especially unknown like that, to build that fan base, if you will. It takes some sort of mainstream break for you to even hit mainstream. So the entire time before that, you're just this person that people show up and like, I don't like you, who are you? You know, and it, and it becomes a thing. See, the thing about New York is, like, when I asked him if he even, like, into, like, he probably got into the underground scene, I was... Living here my whole life, even after I dropped out of college, like I knew it was opportunities, but I still it took me a year to literally from like a year just to find out from I dropped out November 2020 to November uh, 2021 is when I did my first show. So it literally took me a year just to find out about this shit. But once you know, you're in there. Like once you're put through the door, but, like you just constantly being people. Yeah, you're just you're in this network now. All of a sudden, yeah. But it's like if you don't know, then you don't know, and a lot of a lot of people don't know. And also, it's like, it's like, like how you say you met your homie like a week ago and mm-hmm. so you pull up to like one of the cool things over. Sometimes it. about the triangle. I mean, like, I got to meet a person who could put me on to somebody. I mean, like, I met somebody who told me to pop out to a uh, dream thingy, uh, mm-hmm. to dream video show. That's why I met dream. I did video sure. show. And then, yeah, dream put me on to you. So now, boom, triangle complete. And then now, boom, you, where I can do this, and somebody else going to hear this out. Magic Dragons. Boom, yeah. They're walking right now. Keep, this is gonna keep going. <laughs> like. Tell us about your music. What type of content are you are you expressing on the music? Is it a certain subject? Are you a party record type of artist? Like what 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 are you doing? What's your, what's your focus? So I realized that my audience, like the type of music I make, is really for like people that are emotionally unavailable people. Okay, well, like, what, what, what's that term they use now? Like, more emo music? Nah, I see, but it's not emo. That's, like, I do the more dabble in the emo, mm-hmm. but that's what I'm saying. Like, at first, I, like, established myself with the whole mainstream R&B melodic vibe. That's, okay. So, right. like, style-wise, that's what I was doing originally. But overall, like, my lyrics, it just goes for anybody who's, like, rounded or, like, hurt inside. Like, I try to make healing music for the most part. I feel like words have power. Like, you... Where's our power? You know that. Especially now, imagine on the grand scheme, the radio play my, play my song, 1051, that got 20,000 people in the Tri-State area listening to my song, and they're all singing my song at the same time. What message is everybody on? Like, what wave is everybody on right there? Man? I try to keep that in mind. So it's not like, yeah, we're going to come to your block and send a couple shots. I don't try to give them that. Feel me? I try to give them some more... Yeah. We're gonna pull up on you black and try to help you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what we got to do. Like, we're gonna pull up, we're gonna slide, we're gonna have a good time. Man, it's, 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 it's nice, man. Also, like, just over a raise to like the consciousness. So, uh, you, your music, again, you said it focused on positivity. How many, have you put out any projects already? How many songs are out there right now? It's huh? what, what do you got? Yo, let me tell you, on release, I got like 100 songs. 100 songs? Like 100. Wow, I don't 100. even think I have a bunch of jokes. 100. 100. 100. Yeah. 100. <laughs> I gotta remember my New York lingo, so when I walk yeah. out of there, like, please don't steal my 100. <laughs> that's my only 100. Nah, that's not, not, not gonna ever be like, please don't steal my 100. I don't even make You're sense, right. bro. I feel like somebody took my honey. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like a random bad. song right now. <laughs> 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 hey. Please don't steal my honey. 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 Please don't steal my
What's up? So my Yeah. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I got you. <laughs> but, um. But your music, so you said you got about 100 out oh, there. Right oh, out right now? Page. This is yeah. kind of embarrassing. This is really embarrassing. Oh. I got two songs. I got two videos on YouTube, and I'm on old platforms, so I got about three songs on old platforms. I don't know how y'all, how into the stars y'all are, but we in the middle of, like, retro game. Oh, retro game. God. So I'm just waiting to retro game is over to drop my next uh, project, which yeah. is, like. It's weird right now. Yeah, it's like so fucking weird. Yeah. That's when I'm gonna drop my pop music. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm gonna fuck if I'm from New York. I'm gonna fuck with y'all. Big boy, expect from me. I'm gonna fuck it. I'm about to drop some pop shit. I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna start a whole new wave and then I'm gonna bring it back. That's what I'm gonna do. Like, I see myself, like, in retrospect, like, I see myself, like, if I just be me right now, like, I'm thinking, oh, wait, gee, this, this, and that, and she influenced the game. And, like, I, I'm thinking like that. You feel me? I'm loving it. I'm, I'm I'm already excited for this. I, I need to check these videos. I love the Thank energy you. with all this stuff. What do you got going on currently? I know you just said right now you want to wait for your album release after this retro, retro game. Yeah, but right. But what what else what else you got in store for me? So. I'm also dropping a vlog. I'm dropping a vlog. I shot oh. two episodes. Yeah, that's different. Uh, okay. Like, I'm an artist, but I'm not only an artist. Like I'm an icon. Yeah, that was a fire shit. Yeah. yeah it's a mess. You're just music. Yeah, so that's just a way to like get my YouTube um, interactions up, you know, on streams, contests, subscribers. So I started a vlog. I got two episodes already shot. Like I said, waiting for retro kids to do anything new and technology for anything. So, yeah, that's that's kind of like a vlog. So outside of the music, you're expanding into the, these, these YouTube vlogs. YouTubers, yeah. But all my vlogs are like, based around music. So it's not like, hey guys, I'm going to show you my hair today. Nah, it's like we're all doing something. First one was a performance, second one I was over there. I'm on the streets, I mean the uh, stairs, the rest stairs, kind of stairs. Okay. And I was just showing a bunch of random people my music, kind of getting on their nerves, kind of just vibing and having fun. Just some silly shit. That's fine, this show is just built on silly yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anything professional go on in your world. So we know what you got coming up down the road, right? But okay, my real quick. Guys, I work at a studio too in the Bronx. Come on. That's right. You were saying you did Magic yeah. Dragons? Let's go. Let's, let's, let's collab. Come on. Show up. I know you guys are out here. What borough are you in right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, just out of curiosity, you got your hand in so many things. You said you do beat production, you got a blog, you do music, you know. Um, but what's the goal for the kid, you know, individually? Like what? What do you? What do you? What's your? What do you want to achieve when you're doing all this? So like, my all set is done, and I'm dead. I don't want to be dead. Like I still want to be here on Earth. You know, leave behind a legacy. Exactly. So that's my music, and that's my message. That's my healing. All of that. Like by the time Lady G leaves the Earth, the Earth has to be at least I say twelve percent better. 12% better. I love that. It's a good number. number. Yeah, it can't be such a very manageable number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I'm gonna like make it the best planet on in the galaxy. Because people are like, yeah, I wanna I wanna uh leave the earth 80% better than I found it. Fuck off. We're not uh -huh. gonna do clean up all you, the trash. You do a few percent here, I need to do a few percent here, we'll get there. You know, but you're right. That's yeah. such a that's such a manageable number. I yeah, like it. Do well. you know what? If someone asks me, man, how much effort are you gonna put in today? Maybe about like 12. 12%. It sounds, sounds like a number I won't pull back. 12% is pretty big in the grand scheme of how big the earth is. That's how many people I can touch. I feel like that's reasonable. Whatever that is, that's mm -hmm. reasonable. Yeah, definitely. Um, Lady G, where can people follow you? How can, how can we send some of our fans out here to come check out some of your work? Alright, so guys, like I said, I'm using on all platforms. You guys want to tap into my gram? That's Lady DG Music. So that's L A Y dot D G dot Music. Follow me, you know, subscribe to my uh, my Finsta, my spam change. It's B O A could never. And that's where I post a lot more like silly content, like behind the scenes shit like this. That's my uh, my main page got the real, you know, the lady. Perfect. Like the lady who's looking at me right now, like, who we about to sign? So, okay, see, like this, this New York artistry, man, they got their shit on lockout. Mm -hmm. You're you gonna be there when they watch, Chad. Yeah, I hope so. I gotta do a lot of shit on my Instagram. He's here. Yeah, I am here. <laughs> um, Lady G, thank you for hanging out with us. This is 
been awesome. I've had such a great time with you. You are you absolutely. Are, and you know, if I was gonna, gonna hit some mics, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if I was gonna imagine anything of my guests from New York and what they were gonna be like, this was exactly it. Just this, this confidence and this being positive energy of like. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, do you want to say anything to our friends out in Miami? You want to, you want to know anything? No, yeah, we in the motherfucking yams. My guy, shout out John. He brought the yams to New York City to the big house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, be outside with it. That's what I'm talking about. Shades on, Shades baby. On, baby. That's it. I know. Shades on. That's what I need to see. Yeah. I want to thank my good friend Jack for hanging out here. This is now, Jack is now our is official so leader sorry. of the New York Cats. I'm in New York. I'm the New York correspondent. Yes. So he was like, Jack, we need guests. And then I didn't find any. So. Exactly. So he's going. right on the spot. <laughs> he's being very consistent as he was in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need for my New York Pats. A bunch of like people that you tell them to go do stuff and they're like with so much positivity and such vigor and it's like, yes. Yeah. And then, and then two days later, what? Hey, what is this? Yeah. Again. yeah. <laughs> what was it that you needed? I got, I got, I got batteries. I don't know. I might have missed this this morning. If somebody, if I didn't spend a night at my cousin's house and somebody didn't come vigorously mm-hmm. knocking on their door and not check my phone, like, fuck, that's today. Because you guys can give a heads up. But I was still here. Yeah, look, see, I mean, it. It good. I, I gave a last second heads up, but that's very Miami. We we're, we're last second. Okay. Here, okay. Know? That is very true about us. Have you ever heard about us in Miami being last second? Yeah. We are last second. Yeah. I knew. You, I knew you knew that I'd be here. Yeah. You last second. second. You didn't even. Yeah. 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 He, he kept this Miami. He, you know, he makes it feel very Miami for me right now. Guys, make sure you like and subscribe, guys. Make sure you do that here. That little logo that pops up here on YouTube. Click on that stuff. That's right. (laughs) Give my friend here, Lady G, a follow. She's been an amazing person. I believe you will be totally happy with following her. She has several kinds, and she has her vlogs too, check that out. Oh, my, my channel too, same thing. Um, If you look up Lady G Wonder, that's my song, my newest video. Check that out, it's in Central Park too. I know y'all see Spider-Man, when he was yeah. on the bridge and everything, that's Central Park, so get into it right now, that's it. No. Again, thank you to the crew. Thank you again, Lady G. Okay. Guys, we'll see you in the next episode. I gotta get my life together Seems like that's my daily endeavor These days I move way too clever I'm in control but I pull the lever I think it's time that I make a switch I think it's time that I use this Make you wanna say Bye bye Guys, that was so That was a lot of fun, yeah Seems like that's my daily endeavor These days I move way too clever I'm in control but I pull the lever I think it's time for me to make a switch It's time for me to make some changes I ain't going to the grave they, they said they ain't cutting the lights off. Okay, oh, uh, <laughs> that was just making. You don't sure. pay me enough. Yeah, the sound guy says it's over. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't even care if I got nothing to do with the electricity. I'm just out of here.